All right, well, we just received word from my family member that there is a snake caught in a glue trap in their garage. So right now, we are headed towards their house with the intention of rescuing the snake. Now, I'm not sure how long it's been there. They found it this morning, so I'm hoping it came out this morning to bask and got caught in the glue trap. But if we can get to it in time, we can hopefully save it. Based on the pictures, I'm thinking it's a baby black rat snake, but I won't know for sure until we get there, so. Let's hope it's still alive. All right, well, we just showed up at the house, and right here is the adult black rat snake. So the baby's on the trap, and I, I just looked at the baby and said, you know, I bet the adult kind of crawled in on one of these corners under the pavement. I looked over, and I was like, hey, that looks like a snake. Well, guess what? It's the adult. So this one is definitely a mature adult. It's probably about four feet long. Now, I haven't interacted with it yet, so I'm not sure how temperamental it may or may not be. I'm gonna try and go as calmly as we can and just see how it reacts. I'm gonna let it get a good sniff before I make any kind of physical contact with it. Because I really wanna give it its own time to kind of decide that I'm not a threat. Now it's actually pretty warm because it's been basking here by this brick wall in the sunlight. It seems pretty calm. Sweet. Check it out. Yeah, so this is an adult black rat snake. Um, this is actually a really nice size one, a very healthy individual. It's probably about four feet long. It has nice body condition. It's nice and heavy. Now you can see there's actually some, some damage to the scales going on up there. I'm not sure exactly what could have caused that. It could have been attacked by predators or it could be a skin condition. Um, but it's very, very warm right now. So what it was doing on this brick wall was just sunning. So the sun, I guess, came up behind the trees over there. It hits this brick wall very first thing. So this wall has been heating up all day, and this snake decided that the best way to get sunlight was up against this wall. So that's probably why it was just hanging out on the side of the house there. Um, you don't always see them out in the open like that, but it is pretty cool when you do. Now, an adult like this um, could definitely bite and probably hurt pretty bad if it wanted to, but usually black rat snakes at this size know that they have very few natural predators, so they don't tend to be uh, naturally very aggressive. So what we're going to do is take the baby black rat and this adult, and we're going to relocate them to a habitat where they'll have plenty of space and food, um, and there's no chance of them um, getting injured or accidentally run over or anything like that. So away from any roads, we'll take these back home, and uh, hopefully they can both live out long, happy lives in the wild. Yep. All right, are you ready to put it in the pillowcase? Give it a pet? Say goodbye? <laughs> Good job. Alright, so we're just going to put it in this pillowcase and we're going to transport it to a safer location. We have our lovely assistants, Megan and Llewellyn, assisting uh, with the capture. So, you, once you get it in a pillowcase, the goal is just to keep the whole opening of the pillowcase at the top and the snake at the bottom. So now it's safe and ready for transport. Alright, so we got both snakes in the car right now. We have the adult black rat snake that was like a surprise bonus. I thought we were going to go there and just get the baby, but the adult was hanging out also, so we picked up that one. Now we're keeping the baby on the glue trap as we transport it, just because it's immobilized right now, it can't move very much, so that's uncomfortable for the snake, but it does make it a little easier to transport. Um, so when we get that baby home, we're going to try and work it off the glue trap. We might keep the baby for a couple days just to make sure that it's healthy and can eat before we release it back into the wild. All right, so this is the baby black rat snake that we got from the glue trap. Now, this was captured just this morning um, in my family's garage, and they called me immediately, sent me a picture. I could tell from the pattern that's a black rat snake. Now, it, it looks very, very different than the adult black rat snake. You see, it has these kind of chevrons or squares on the top and also on the side. As babies, they'll keep this pattern for up to around their first year of life before that pattern starts to fade and they turn fully black as adults. But this one um, probably didn't hatch this year. This actually probably hatched last year, maybe during the fall, and spent the winter under my family's, um, under the cement of their driveway uh, to stay warm during the winter and then came out to bask in their garage when it got caught in the screw trap. So to remove a snake from a glue trap, I looked it up and it said if we use vegetable oil and we calmly massage this glue around the snake, it should hopefully be able to free itself. Now we're going to try and do this as calmly as possible. We really don't want to stress this animal out, but we do want it to get off the trap as soon as possible to maximize its chance of survival. So I'm just going to take a couple, I've never tried this before, I'm not sure how it's going to work. So 
I think the vegetable oil is helping. Slowly but surely, you can see like back here on the back end, some of the glue is kind of combining with the oil and getting a little less sticky. You can see we have this back half. Now what I'm doing is just massaging very gently with the tip of my finger. I'm massaging the oil into the glue that's under his scales. Those ventral scales on his belly are very sensitive at this age. If they rip, he could have an open wound, which would be very prone to infection. So I'm trying my absolute hardest to be as gentle and, and slow as possible with this process. Ideally, we would be able to get him to move himself off the trap. But as you can see, uh, he slowly, he is working off. Um, I have my finger under him right there. So his tail is free. We just have this little segment of skin. I think, I think he should be almost free. But you can see those ventral scales are just so stuck. I feel so bad for the little guy. Just massage my finger right under there. Get it in between that glue bond and get oil into that bond. So a little bit at a time. He's so close. He, he knows he's so close. He's starting to move again. You're doing good, buddy. Keep going. Come on, come on. Oh, he's so close. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. He's so cute. He's free. Look at that. And he's he's still healthy. He's moving. He's moving just, just great. Now, my hands are a little oily, which is fine. This oil should help clean off some of the remaining glue from his bottom. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Look how teeny he is. Wow. So this, yeah, this is definitely a little teeny black rat snake that probably just hatched at the very end of, of the last birthing cycle. He probably basically hatched and immediately crawled back under the cement. And he just woke up from the winter. He came out to bask in the sun and got stuck on this glue trap. Um, but thankfully my aunt called me just in time. We were able to get him off the trap. I'm so glad that he's active and moving like this right off the bat. I was really worried that he might be sluggish and, and kind of stuck in the glue still um, on those ventral scales. But it seems like the oil did a pretty good job of taking that glue off most of the scales. I still feel some stickiness on him, but he'll be okay. So we have some pinky mice um, saved from when I was raising my corn snake in the freezer. I think we're going to prepare a small enclosure for him and just raise him until he's, you know, probably about twice this size and then re-release him into the wild. Because even though he's off the glue trap now, this is when snakes are the most vulnerable. Baby snakes have a very low survival rate in the wild. Almost everything eats them. At this size, they're basically just vertebrate worms. Um, they have teeny little teeth that can't do almost any damage. And their only chance of survival is to hide under something. But the problem is, now that we've taken him out of the um, habitat that he was used to growing up in, um, he doesn't really know the good hiding places around here. And it's also still dipping down into the 40s at night, so he can freeze to death if he can't get below the ground. So I think we'll at least keep him for a month or two, nurse him back to full health, and then release him into good habitat where he'll hopefully be able to survive and grow in the wild on his own. But wow, I'm so glad we got to release him from this glue trap. He's so cute. Such a cool little animal. I'll show you how we will prepare his enclosure now, and we'll get him into his temporary home. All right, so we're gonna set up this little 10 gallon enclosure for him. Now this should be suitable. I mean, for a snake of this size, this is more than enough space for him to be happy. Um, until he's probably about a year or two old, this will be a perfectly sized enclosure for him. We have some aspen bedding. Um, it's my favorite bedding to use for small snakes, especially because it's a lot softer than pine bedding. Um, so we're just gonna put probably an inch of this in the bottom so that he has enough to bury himself in, but he can't get like lost in it. And we're gonna spread that out on the bottom of the enclosure. So once again, that's just aspen bedding, which is pretty common for snakes. So we're gonna make sure that's nice and fluffy. We're gonna break up any of the chunks so you can easily burrow through it. It's really important to provide this kind of space for snakes in an enclosure because they don't feel like they can get under something and hide from you. They can become really stressed out and it's just not good for their health. All right, so we're gonna use this as a hide for now until I can find a better one. This is just some pine bark that I found on a rotting log um, out in our woods. And this is a pretty natural hide. Obviously, it literally came from the woods. And while this snake may not actually have experience hiding in the woods because it, it probably only lived um, under the driveway, um, hopefully it knows what to do. So we'll put this over here in the corner 
So that's something to kind of curl up on. We'll throw this rock in over here so they can heat up in the sunlight and give it a little basking area. And then black rat snakes, as you've seen from my other videos, love to climb. So we're also going to give it a little, little climbing stick. It kind of goes across the enclosure here. So that is something fun to play with. Now this is a very simple setup. This is just something I threw together right now. I would like to find a better hide from it, and I'll put the water dish right there. But this should be sufficient um, for the time being. So once again, we're only going to keep him for uh, probably a month or two. They, are, they grow really fast when they're babies. Um, in the two months we have him, he'll probably double in size, I would say, as long as we're feeding him regularly. But he's, <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a fighter, man. He really worked hard to get off that glue trap. I'm so glad that we were able to help him out. Um, and this is a snake that should do really well once we nurse him back to health and get him in the wild. So we'll get him down here. Well, about five minutes after recording that segment, I went to get the lid for the enclosure, and when I came back, he had already climbed up his stick and out into our woods. While I would have liked to raise him for a little bit, the fact that he could climb out and hide on his own means that he's probably going to do just fine in the wild, and I'll definitely be on the lookout for the little guy as I explore around my house. Thanks so much for watching this video, and be sure to keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.